warriors, workers and worshippers. Notes on the journeyings of the Ark of God from Sinai to Zion. By Theophilus Ruse. Chapter 4. The Ark Before Jericho. Joshua chapter 6. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel, none went out, and none came in. One barrier has been surmounted, and now another of a different character, but none the less formidable, presents itself. The Ark comes into prominence again here, where every detail relating thereto will well repay our meditation. The deeply valuable lessons of Gilgal, and other halting places, we must of necessity pass over. At Gilgal the people eat of the old corn of the land, and the manna ceased on the morrow after they had eaten of the old corn of the land, neither had the children of Israel manna any more. But they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and, behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us, or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord am I now come. Thus was Joshua heartened for the task before him, of leading the Lord's host into possession of the promised inheritance. Held at that moment by powerful enemies. And what attitude more becoming could he have taken than to inquire, What saith my Lord unto his servant? With everything thus left in God's hands, he arranges the order. And for the second time we find him departing from his own original plan, and the priests are called upon to bear the ark instead of the Levites. As we know the Kohathites, men of Kohath, one of the sons of Levi, were at first called to this special service of bearing upon their shoulders the ark of God, which, with the other sacred vessels, had already been covered up in due order by the priests. Here, as we have said, the priests are called upon to carry it, while seven other priests march in front of the ark bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns, preceded by a company of armed men. It is evidently here priestly work that has to be done. The people were by this time familiar with the sound of the silver trumpets calling an alarm for each new setting forth, but in this case trumpets of ram's horns for the first time are to be used. And these must have emitted a very different note from the clarion call of the silver horns. What lesson more evident can be learned here than that of absolute dependence upon God, and perhaps the blowing of the ram's horns, with their unmusical and monotonous notes, suggests true prayer, which is always the expression of dependence. What strange tactics, what futile efforts, must this marching of the great host have seemed to the people of Jericho, as day after day they surrounded the city in this extraordinary fashion. The armed men, the priests with their ram's horn trumpets, and then that strange object on the shoulders of priests, covered with a blue cloth. What can it all mean? That symbol of the divine presence, which meant everything to Israel, must have appeared the strangest thing of all to the people of Jericho, and after six days no sign appeared of any result following these seemingly strange proceedings nor even from the six more circuits of the seventh day. But, it came to pass at the seventh time, when the priests blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout! For the Lord has given you the city. So the people shouted when the priests blew with the trumpets, and it came to pass, when the people heard the sound of the trumpet. And the people shouted with a great shout, that the wall fell down flat, so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. Joshua chapter 6 verse 16. 20. May we not learn some helpful lesson here. How often in our path does a difficulty present itself, as strong and apparently impassable as the walls of Jericho. Difficulty not of the ordinary kind perhaps, nor arising from any failure on our part, but growing even out of a desire to serve the Lord and be obedient to his word and name. The way is blocked as effectually as by a walled city, and we have felt powerless to find a way through. Let us remember Jericho, and the seven days' monotonous marches, and the ram's horn trumpets, and be encouraged in prayer and dependence, the prayer of faith shall bring the power of God down on our behalf. And he will give deliverance in his due time and way. What says Hebrews chapter 11 verse 30? By faith the walls of Jericho fell down, after they were compassed about seven days. The two men whom Joshua sent into Jericho to view the land said, Truly the Lord has delivered into our hands all the land. For even all the inhabitants of the country do faint because of us. Joshua chapter 2 verse 24. And they had not then actually come to Jericho. But their faith was of the same kind and quality as the faith of Caleb who forty years before, when Moses sent spies from the wilderness of Paran, stilled the people before Moses, and said. Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Alas Israel as a whole were ever the same. They were in the hands and under the eye of the same God forty years before as now, and he could as well have taken them into the land then as now. If God be for us, who can be against us? He is the giver of faith, and may try it, but he also honours it. We have heard with our ears, O God, our fathers have told us what work thou didst in their days in the times of old. 
how thou didst drive out the heathen with thy hand, and planted street them, how thou didst afflict the people, and cast them out. For they got not the land in possession by their own sword, neither did their own arm save them, but thy right hand, and thine arm, and the light of thy countenance. Because thou hadst a favour unto them. Psalm chapter 44 verses 2 to 3. Did not our Lord himself speak a parable to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint? Luke chapter 18 verse 1. And by his servant Paul later he exhorts us to be careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. There is also a difference to be noted between the enemies Israel met with in the land. And those like Amalek that they had to contend with in the wilderness. In the latter they were not equipped for war, they were a defenseless and dependent host passing through the desert on foot and, as in the case of Edom, anxious to avoid fighting. Hence the striking deliverance from Amalek's attempt to hinder them, and the judgment of God on this particular enemy, declaring war upon them, from generation to generation, because they fell upon the weak and tired stragglers. The Philistines, on the contrary, were in the land, and hostile from the very first, although their part of the country was not promised to Israel. They represent typically the enemies of Christ inside the profession of Christianity, allowed to be there through the laxity and unfaithfulness of his people. When we think of the enemies of the truth today, where are the most dangerous of these to be found? Not in the ranks of the infidel or careless crowd outside, but amongst the so-called higher critics, and those who attack the foundations of the faith, and the blessed person of the Lord Jesus from inside. It is in the house of his friends, or professed friends, that again the Lord is wounded. What we need today in the face of all these enemies, and these cities walled up to heaven, as it were, is the like faith of Joshua and Caleb. When the spies compared themselves with the giants in the land, they were as grasshoppers in their own sight, but when faith, in Caleb, contrasted the giants with the God of Israel, then these giants were the grasshoppers. Joshua and Caleb who walked in faith with God through the land, made a good report of it, and carried a cluster of the grapes of Eshcol, and brought of the pomegranates and the figs as proof of what grew there. Their confidence was in the right hand of God's power, which had destroyed Pharaoh and his hosts in the Red Sea and would further display itself in driving out the Canaanites on the other side of Jordan, if there was but faith on the part of Israel to trust him. Instead of this the congregation murmured against Moses and Aaron, and said one to another, Let us make a captain and return into Egypt. For our conflict with spiritual wickedness today, the Lord has made every provision. That ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, see Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 to 17, and the description of this whole armor, or panoply, is completed by the behest, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18. We are reminded of C. Wesley's beautiful hymn, Thou dost conduct thy people safely through all temptation, nor will we fear, since thou art near. The fire of tribulation. The world with sin and Satan display their strength before us, by thee we shall break through them all and join the heavenly chorus. By faith we see the glory of which thou dost assure us, the world despise, for that high prize which thou hast set before us. And may we count it worthy to meet the Son from heaven, there see our Lord, by all adored, to us in glory given.